Peter Eulides with you. This is the Stock Market Cycles Update for Wednesday, May 13. We went online today for just a couple of minutes because we were beyond excitement after a year and a half of, in of intense back and forth with Stefan Schurkman in Germany. Uh, our software was online and available at TradeStation. And I was beyond excited uh, that we finally had it out in the open for public consumption. And I can't tell you how depressed I am now. I mean, I thought there was going to be a, a pretty good reaction. But if I told you that, and you can see, you see the number of views we get per day. It's not a fabulous number, but we average almost 2,000 views a day over the past several weeks. And you figure, I mean, maybe one out of 100 people would be interested in it. We get less than, less than a 1% response. And this is for the free version. It's like, well, I guess not going to do too well with a paid version if people don't even want it for nothing. Anyway, that's the way things go. I'm sure you all have a reason. Well, Peter, if you only did or if you had done or if it was this and that, I don't want to hear it, okay? So don't give me your remarks about what is lacking with the software or what is lacking with one thing or another. I'm not in the mood to hear that today. In fact, I wasn't even in the mood to do an update today. These free updates we're doing, obviously, they're not completely altruistic because we're looking to get you interested in the software. But you have been enjoying free updates for a year and a half. And I would dare say that, I'm not going to say I have done it, but the projections have probably given you a better picture of the stock market than anyone else I am aware of, anyone else even coming close in terms of almost pinpointing the bottom in, uh, in February of this year. In fact, pinpointing it, giving you downside projections that were hit virtually exactly on the indexes at the March 23rd lows, things like that. But, you know, this is no time to be tooting one's own horn. Just very, very disappointed. Anyway, if you are interested, <clears throat> I know a lot of you don't have TradeStation, but you have to understand that TradeStation is giving the platform away for nothing. So, you have nothing to lose for a couple of weeks. There's the, we're, we're giving the program away for 14 days. That's two weeks of the use of the program. You can take a look at it with things that you trade and see how they would work out. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not in the mood to do any more promotions. Let's take a look at the market. Right now, this is a chart that I've shown you a couple of times over the past few weeks. When I showed it to you, Initially, we had just come up to the 50-day MA and just come up to the 50% retracement on both the S&P and the Dow. Here's the Dow here. Here's the 50-day MA on the Dow. 50-day MA is the green line on the S&P. Moved above it and go back and look at the updates. At this point here, I said the most likely scenario is to pull back towards the 50-day again, towards the 50% retracement again, but most importantly, towards the 50-day. And we've made a mark here from here tomorrow, going back 50 days. Those are going to be the takeaway values now. That's when we had the precipitous decline. So within about a week, the takeaway values for the 50-day are going to be down here somewhere. Within two weeks, they'll be down here. So unless we get an equivalent dramatic decline, this 50-day is going to start turning up. And that's where you might expect to see the market find some kind of support. Um, same basic thing on the Dow Industrials. Now, I will make one point with the S&P here. On a closing basis chart, you had virtually an exact 618 retracement from the closing high to the closing low to a Fibonacci 618. It wasn't exact. The close that day was uh, 2939.51, and this was the 618, 2947. But visually, as you can see, it was almost a spot on 0.618 Fibonacci retracement. Okay, next, I'm, I'm kind of angry about 
cycle projections today and I'm wondering if I'm going to even show you any. But next, I'm going to show you another technical pattern. Here we go. Okay, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We showed you this chart at least once, maybe twice over the past two weeks, especially when we got up here. This is not an after-the-fact chart. Oh, sure, you discovered that when we were up there, we've come down here. No, we showed you this chart as we came up here, okay? February 16, low for the Dow. Christmas of 18, low for the Dow. Closing basis, simple trend line going through those two closes. We virtually came up exactly to it. Broke it decisively, and when you have a decisive break of a trend line, you tend to retrace back to that trend line. If the break is to the downside, you tend to retrace up to it from underneath. And that's exactly what we did. And now we've started to pull back from there. So you could make a bearish case out of that. Don't look at cycle projections. Don't look at anything else. Look at the strict technicals. Now we have something like that in the S&P. Look at this. It's not the same setup as the Dow, but these were the closing bottoms coming up to the all-time high in February of this year. And you will note that we put as our anchors for this trend line was the close of June 3rd, and the second anchor was the close of October 8th. Now, notice also that there were two other closes on it. So it's a four-pointed rising bottoms trend line. We showed you this chart again. Don't ask me the date, but it was within the past couple of weeks. So what we did from there was construct a parallel line that goes back to this important closing low at the December of 18 low, the Christmas low. And here's what happened. We came up to it on April 29th from underneath and could not hold it. Went back below it, came up to it again for two days on May 8th and May 11th, could not hold up to it, and now we're backing off it again. Both these charts we've just shown you are potentially bearish charts. Is this a failure of the pattern? Have we seen the recovery rally and that's it? Now we go down to new lows? Well, the technicals make you think that's a possibility. Now we'll take a quick look at the cycles. The cycles have given significantly higher projections, okay? Let's take a look at those significantly higher projections. Here's the S&P. Five-week offsets, 24.2 to 27.6. Market day offsets. We got the projection right back here. It was confirmed. And we told you at that point, go back and look at the updates. We said the most likely scenario from here would be a sideways to down move into the middle of May. I recall distinctly saying into the middle of May. Well, guess where we are now, folks? The middle of May, I guess, would be May 15th or 16th. That's right in here. And here's where we are today, okay? So the reason I theorized that might happen was because if we went immediately from this point up towards the projections, let me show you the next longer chart, and you'll see what would have happened. If we had gone immediately from this point up to the projections, we would have gotten projections. This would have been the halfway point here. So we're talking about projections up to that 22, 32, 4,000, maybe 4,200. And I was quite sure that was not going to happen. So now what we've seen is a pullback. And if we get down in another day or two, the 2,700, 2,800 level, then we can rally up, cross these offset lines between 27 and 2800 and get the same upside projection as we have with the five-week offsets. These are 10-week offsets. Okay, that's it. I'm. This is an exhausting day for me. I got really excited and <laughs> I think I got excited for nothing because we really got a poor response for free giving it away. Nah, we don't want it. Thanks a lot. We'd rather just watch the free updates okay thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't and go to trade station and get the free 
sample with two weeks of free use of the projections, something you can use in your trading. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow.